What we're going to do in this video is get some practice finding general solutions to separable differential equations. So let's say that I had the differential equation dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, is equal to e to the x over y. See if you can find the general solution to this differential equation. I'm giving you a huge hint. It is a separable differential equation. All right, so when we're dealing with a separable differential equation, what we want to do is get the y's and the dy's on one side, and then the x's and the dx's on the other side. And we really treat these differentials kind of like variables, which is a little hand wavy with the mathematics, but that's what we will do. So let's see, if we multiply both sides times y, so we're going to multiply both sides times y, what are we going to get? We're going to get y times the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to, e to the x, and now we can multiply both sides by the differential dx, multiply both of them by dx, those cancel out, and we are left with y times dy is equal to e to the x dx. And now we can take the integral of both sides, so let us do that. So what is the integral of y dy? Well, here we would just use the reverse power rule. We would increment the exponent, so it's y to the first, but so now when we take the antiderivative, it will be y squared, and then we divide by that incremented exponent, is equal to, well, the exciting thing about e to the x is its antiderivative is, and its derivative is e to the x, is equal to e to the x plus, is equal to e to the x plus c. And so we can leave it like this if we like. In fact, this right over here, this isn't an explicit function. Y here isn't an explicit function of x. You could actually say y is equal to the plus or minus square root of two times all of this business. But this would be a pretty general relationship which would satisfy this separable differential equation. Let's do another example. So let's say that we have the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to, let's say it's equal to y squared times sine of x. Pause the video and see if you can find the general solution here. So once again, we want to separate our y's and our x's. So let's see, we can multiply both sides times y to the negative two power. y to the negative two, y to the negative two. These become one. And then we could also multiply both sides times dx. So if we multiply dx here, those cancel out. And then we multiply dx here. And so we're left with y to the negative two power times dy is equal to sine of x dx. And now we just can integrate both sides. Now what is the antiderivative of y to the negative two? Well once again, we use the reverse power rule. We increment the exponent, so it's going to be y to the negative one. And then we divide by that newly incremented exponent, so we divide by negative one. Well, that would just make this thing negative. And that is going to be equal to, so what's the antiderivative of sine of x? Well, it is, you might recognize it if I put a negative there and a negative there. The antiderivative of negative sine of x, well, that's cosine of x. So this whole thing is going to be negative cosine of x. Or another way to write this, I could multiply both sides times a negative one, and so these would both become positive. And so I could write one over y is equal to cosine of x, and actually let me write it this way, plus c, don't wanna forget my plus c's, plus c, or I can take the reciprocal of both sides if I wanna solve explicitly for y, I could get y is equal to one over cosine of x, plus c as our general solution. And we're done. That was strangely fun.